sound doctrine. Older men are to be sober-minded, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith, in love, and in steadfastness. Older women, likewise, are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good and so train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind, and submissive to their own husbands that the word of God may not be revived. Likewise, urge the younger men to be self-controlled. Show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works, and in your teaching show integrity, dignity, and sound speech that cannot be condemned, so that an opponent may be put to shame, having nothing evil to say about us. Slaves are to be submissive to their own masters in everything. They are to be well-pleasing, not argumentative, not pilfering, but showing all good faith, so that in everything they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passion, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God, and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, who are zealous for good works. Declare these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no one disregard you. Amen. <clears throat> Beloved Church, having read here in Titus chapter 2, Titus chapter 2, I want us to repeat verse 1. Verse 1. Tito 2. Verse 1. For you, teach what accords to sound doctrine. Can a healthy doctrine. I read with you this passage on this Sunday. Also because this Sunday, as we said, the collection of today will go to support Miami Bible and Training Institute. Now, what is IANI? IANI was a program that was started in 1968 by the missionaries working in Limbogo in the area of Ben. And the program was about implementing the commission, the great command in Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20, where it says, Go to the nations and make them disciples. That's where the name comes from, Iyan, Amban, Nye, Umazu, and make them Abafundiban. So how do you make them my disciples? You must teach them, you must baptize them. So that program, that ministry continues in developing church leaders, in also discipling, discipling discipling by teaching the word of God so that people have roots be founded, Rabbenam foundation in the Bible, but also as a disciple, you must apply the word of God in various areas of life, whether it's marriage, whether it's finances, whatever situation, we must be able to apply the word of God 
in every situation. So that program developed a lot of people. And some of us, some of you who come from that side, participated in the programs. Sunday school programs or camps, um, marriage seminars, and uh, leadership seminars, and various conferences. But that program, it was so that the churches, we must remember what we are called to do. What is the function? What is the purpose? What is the task of a church? Mushumo Wagareke Ndimin. And one of the things that we must put as number one is that the church is supposed to teach the Bible. Kereke Ifanurofunza Bibi. We are here to be taught the Bible. Just tell the one next to you. We are here to be taught the Bible. <laughs> so we must, we must differentiate or refer to church from other institutions. Uh, there are soccer clubs, there are stock fairs, there are taverns, there are political parties, and so forth and so forth. Each organization must have purpose. Even though we are talking of teaching, um, there are various schools, there are various institutions which also say we are here to teach. We are here to teach philosophy. We are here to teach finance. We are here to teach whatever. So the church is supposed to teach the Bible. That's what we are here to learn. And that's why in verse 1, Katito 2, verse 1, this is the message that was given to Titus, that you must teach what accords with sound doctrine. Now, God, the Holy Spirit, used Paul to write this letter to a person called Titus. And who was Titus? Titus was one of the people who was trained by Paul, but then became a leader. And Paul put him in a place called Crete. That's where he must organize the church. Now, what is a church? A church is not a building. A church is people who are called by the Bible. They believe in the word of God. They believe in Jesus Christ. And they continue doing what the word of God says. That's basically what church is. People who are gathered, what is by the word of God, Jesus Christ, their Savior, the Holy Spirit, combining them through the word of God. Continue by the word of God. Now, when people have been brought together as a body, then they must be organized. When you organize people, you are saying, this is what must be done. This is the responsibilities, issue more. But then who must do those work? Who must do those functions? That's what Titus was here in Crete to do, to organize the church. Uzuzanya Crete. So that what these people are, they must continue doing it. They must continue doing what God wants the church to do. And one of you know, that's why you find this letter encouraging Titus to do the right things. How must you choose leadership? What are the requirements of leadership? Bawana, it's being explained in chapter one. And now in chapter two, one of the things that the church must do, is a sound doctrine, healthy doctrine. And what does that mean? It means the right teaching. Because you can teach anything. You can teach your own opinion. You can teach your philosophy. You can come and tell stories. You can come and just motivate people. But when we talk of doctrine, funzo, we are talking about the revelation of God, which is in scripture, the revelation of God, which teaches people about God 
and how they must do for God. So that's why today I said, let's remind each other. What is it that we must be? What is it that we must want to do as church? Because God wants to use the church in teaching, teaching his people. Um, when we are born, we don't know anything. We don't know about life. But how do we come to know about life? Today, you can wash yourself. Today, you can dress yourself. Today, you can even cook. Where did you learn that? How do you do life? But I was taught. And that's what a church does. A church is like a parent. It's like a mother that must, okay, here is a child is born, but then Oyumana must grow, must now do for themselves, must now do life. And that's what church is about. We are children of God, born again, we come to faith, but then to grow, to grow in knowing God, to grow in the spirit, to grow in faith, to grow in serving God, we can't just grow on our own. Aritu the arus are never, but you find that God use church. God use the body of believers and leaders in teaching the Bible, teaching the sound doctrine. Now, when we look at this, we must understand, um, as I said, what must be taught in the church, why it must be taught, and the motivation. Now, the first thing is the important work that must be done in the church to teach this sound doctrine which people must apply in their lives. People must live according to sound doctrine. As we see in verse 1, it is reminding us that that is what must be taught. Sound doctrine. Fumzo is our real. Because when people come to Jesus, when people come to believe, they must hear. When you believe, you must hear. What do you hear? You hear the gospel. You hear the good news of Jesus Christ. And you believe. That's how the Holy Spirit work and bring people to Jesus Christ. We can't know Jesus. We can't be saved. We can't have eternal life without hearing the gospel. Are we together? Because why is important? This is a life and death matter. It's a life and death matter. Sound doctrine, can the gospel, the right teaching, is so that you have the right faith, faith in Christ, so that you can be saved and have eternal life. So that's why this is a very serious matter. That's why even today when people are crying about church or churches, what are we teaching? Because if we give people poison, if we give people doctrine which is wrong, it's not just about your life here on earth, but it affects your relationship with God. It affects your future. If I follow the wrong teaching, I'm going to the wrong destination. So that's why it's important to give people the right doctrine, the sound doctrine. And it is like food. If you want to be healthy, you must check what are you eating. If I'm eating poison, if I'm eating junk food, food that is not healthy, then don't be surprised if your health 
is weak. Mutakaro wa oste. Even with spiritual life, relationship with God, our eternal life, which loves us, it's important that we talk of the right doctrine, the healthy doctrine, kanafunzo is our one. And it is not only that we come to God and be saved and have eternal life, but also as children of God, if we are to grow re-healthy, grow re-strong, in faith, it is because we have the sound doctrine. We have the right teaching. The nafunzo is our lead. And that's what then helps people to become like Christ. Because as I said, Matthew 28, go and make people my disciples. And what is a disciple? A disciple basically is a follower of Jesus Christ. You follow the teaching of Christ. When I know who Christ is, what Christ has done, then I know that this is what I must be. Nifanera unga yesu. Nifanero fana na yesu. But if I come to church and I hear stories, zamfuns, stories of the pastor or stories of other people, how then do I grow to become like Christ? And that's why you'll find that, yes, we are full. We are full in the churches. Many Christians. But are we like Christ? Are we growing to become like Christ? Are we having Christ in us? But we can't have Christ in us if we are not getting the gospel of Christ. And that's why sometimes you find that we don't have roots. Arena means we don't have foundation. But not only the foundation and roots, but the fruit. The fruit that must show that we are like Christ. And that's why, for example, if you see in verse 2, each one of the, the, the older men, what must they be? They must be sober-minded. They must be dignified. They must be self-controlled. They must be sound in faith, in love, in steadfastness. All those characteristics. Those things that are describing the older man or a person. How are they produced? But even before you answer that question, why that list? Why is it to have? It's because of who Christ is. Only submits us all. This is what we must be. But then how must we be that? If very how must it be produced in us? It is through the word, the spirit, using the word of God to produce that. Even the older women, look at verse 3. How must they be? They must be reverent in behavior. Not people who are slaves to wine. They must be able to teach and train others. In the Bible, Bazalwan, there are many lists like this. Many lists, characteristics. Or, you must have this. You must have this. You must do this. You must do this. Those kind of lists which describe a believer, they are telling us, this is what God wants. They are telling us, this is what Christ showed. But they are telling us, this is what Christ wants you to be, to become, to produce. Christ can help you to be this picture that you see. But you can't be this picture if you are not looking to Christ, if you are not feeding the word of Christ. It's like a recipe. Do we do it? Do we bake? Or we don't bake? I'm going to go to the but if you bake, ingredients. We mix ingredients. So you must follow a recipe. Let's say you want to bake cake. You want to bake scones. You must follow a recipe. But if you just mix anything and you think 
you will get a good, let's say, chocolate cake. Hey, hey, hey. It was a flop. But don't go for flop. Because you didn't follow the ingredients. You didn't follow the receipt. Now, if we are saying right life, if we are saying a good man, a good woman, if we are saying this is healthy person, this is the right person, the picture, we get it from God, who reveal, who teach us in the Bible. But this picture that we must be, how do we paint it? How do we become Matubabudi, good people? How do we have the right life? There is ingredient. And what is those ingredients? What is the receipt? What is the process? The word of God. A lot of people are crying, even in society. Hey, hey, gender-based violence. Hey, hey, men are not good. Women are not good. We are crying about children. We want right children. We want the youth to be right. But then, how do we make them right? How do we produce healthy family? How do we produce healthy marriage? How do we produce healthy man and woman? You'll find them people taking other things. Let's go to psychology. Let's go to traditions. Let's go to this and this. But God is giving us the word. God is giving us doctrine, the right teaching, the revelation, that if we teach ourselves, we teach each other, the result you become sober, self-controlled, loving, faithful people. But if we put aside the word of God, if we put aside this right doctrine, not only are we putting in danger the eternal life, but also what we want to achieve, the right life of Ashambul, we fail to achieve it. And that's one of the things we expect by, from a church. That's why we must have programs. Youth program, Sunday school program, men program, women programs, many services. One of the products or results is right living. But right living coming from the teaching. The doctrine. And that's what we must even encourage, even today. Yes, there are many institutions. There is education, people going to school, people being, being trained. But if we think that we are going to solve the problems of relationships, we are going to solve the problems of humanity, we are going to fix people, maybe by education. And that is a, let's say, UJ. You come back with a degree. You are an accountant. You are an engineer. Maravadiwana, you continue violent, abusive, not doing the right things. Because, yes, education is good. Education is necessary. But it is not what changes us. It is not what makes us wise and impacts us not only with relationship with God, but also relationship with each other. So that's why Paul is encouraging Tito to teach the sound doctrine. Here in Crete, upper Crete, where there is a church, you are a leader. Work with other leaders. And one of the things you must achieve, one of the things you must do, is that this church must teach right doctrine. Because if you don't do that, Kabado says Zakah chapter 1, chapter 1 verse 12. Because uh, these things which I'm talking about in society, um, which you see today, to know also one of it's not, Uchinyarana Mus is not today. The corruption of today didn't start today. But everywhere there is corruption. So now in chapter 1, listen to verse 12. Verse 12. One of the Cretans, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy gluttons. Do you hear those words? Or eh? Do you see those words? Liars, evil beasts, violent people, lazy gluttons, lazy gluttons in the bottle who just drink. They do nothing. 
Isn't it what is happening today? Eh? Isn't it what we see around us? But then, if we have to change, Savule Rabambua, as Chief Titus is being told, as a leader of the church, organizing the church in Crete, where there is things like this, right living is produced by the right doctrine. Uchiro Abudi, Uverezwa Mapunda is our Right living is produced by right doctrine. Let's say those words together. Right living is produced by right doctrine. Right living is produced by right doctrine. Right living is produced by right doctrine. So that's why it's important. And that's why we must encourage each other individually, read your Bible. But also if you have family, you are a parent, you are a father, you are a mother, you have children, one of the things you must do, you must switch off the TV. Switch off the TV. We are going to have 15 minutes, 30 minutes of reading the Bible and singing and praying. Can I get an amen? Or hmm? <laughs> don't have to do that. Some are giving me uh, angry looks. Uh, we must switch off the TV, even if it's 20 minutes, 30 minutes a day, to read the Bible, to read together. And especially you who are fathers, you start there. You, 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 you are you are the pastor of your home. The one who phones you. I'm not the pastor of your home, by the way. Yeah? You you are the what? You, you are the pastor. You are the you are the priest. You want to cheap eh? You are the priest of your home. You are the senior pastor. You must not come and say papa papa to me. I'm not your papa. Uh, you are the papa of your home. You should be the one teaching your home, saying, here we pray, here we sing, here we teach the Bible. That's where church starts. That's where the faith starts. That's where the right living starts. And that's what we must then do. We teach each other because look at Titus, uh, Titus two, in in verse uh, also in verse three, when he talks of the women, the older women, what must they do? They must teach the young women. Um, also verse six, age the younger men. You find that this teaching, Titus must teach others, so that others must go and teach others. I don't know if I'm making sense. You are teaching others, you are being taught, so that you go and teach others. You read the Bible, you learn the Bible, we study the Bible, but it doesn't end in you. As you come on and you say, yeah, now I know the Bible, I read the Bible, I go to church. No, it's not only that. You must go and teach others. And where do you start to teach others? You start also in your home, where you teach your children, you teach your wife, you teach your household. But even outside, where we meet with others, that's what we then do. And all this we do so that God is glorified. God is glorified. How? When people know him. God is glorified when people obey him. God is glorified when people praise him. And that's what we do when we teach right doctrine. It leads us to see God who is great. This is the God we must worship. When we have the right doctrine, we see God. This is the one we must serve. When we have the right doctrine, I give my life to God. Because why am I here on earth? Why not the Panoshango? It is to serve God. It is to obey God. It is to walk with God. But I can't do that if I don't have right doctrine. Healthy or sound doctrine. But let me come to the second thing. The second thing when we talk of teaching sound doctrine, you see that it has to also be done through demonstration. You have to demonstrate. 
ifunziwa nanga uto sume ezwa. Eli ifilori to demonstrate, to model. And that's what you see also Titus being told that one of the ways you have to teach Uvanaka verse 7 show yourself in all respects to be a model model tumo of good works and in your teaching show again show integrity dignity verse 8 yari, and sound speech that cannot be condemned so that an opponent may not be may, may be put to shame having nothing evil to say about us demonstration usumbeza it's like you are teaching someone again to cook or to bake. You don't just uh, show them the receipt. Go and do this and this and this. But a good way is that I'm going to show you how to cook palm. I'm going to show you how to cook palm. And you cook with the person. What do you mean? You don't get it. When you... You see, I'm demonstrating. I can never go to Bika. I'm going to Bika. I'm going to Bika. I'm going to Bika. I'm doing that thing. Or I'm mixing the the bath with the millimeter with the water. Uh, and also beating it. But you have to demonstrate it. You have to demonstrate it. So that the person can see. So that the person uh, can also practice. So that the person can see that, oh, this is how it is done. This is how it is possible. Now, one of the things the church must do when it says, when God says, teach sound doctrine, is to demonstrate this doctrine. Is to demonstrate this faith. For the world outside, those who are opponents, those who don't know God, they must not just hear about Christ, but they must see Christ. They must not just hear about love, but they must see love. They must not just hear about forgiveness, but they must see forgiveness. And so forth and so forth. Demonstrate usumbeza. And for Titus and the church and us to do that, we must uh, not only know the right doctrine, but also, number one, the leaders. We who are leaders, those who are pastors, who are elders, they must demonstrate a model of faith, model of obedience, model of loving God and loving other people. But also, the church, when they learn from their leaders, they show it among themselves. And that's why it's important. Leadership. When you choose leadership, it's not just qualification. Okay, we move to work on number. Comes in the rabbi, work on number English. Yeah? I can speak English, I can speak Zulu, I can speak Sutu. Afia, no, let's choose him. Because this guy can talk many languages. But, he's not right. He's a drunkard. He's fair. He's violent. He's stealing money. But no, 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 he's, he's, he's educated, this guy. But this guy has got money. That's not how you are to teach. That's why even in chapter 1, you will find the qualifications of elders and deacons. It's not just uh, what you call skill and ability to talk. But also, let's see evidence, commitment of a person who believes in Christ, but also obey Christ, who follow Christ in his life. And that's what even Titus is being told to do. When you are teaching, how must you teach? That's why you see the word, show. Show. Sumbezan. Sumbezan. Demonstrate. You have to demonstrate this. Not just talk it, but you must demonstrate it. And when you demonstrate it, you are showing what is inside of you. It must come out. The way you talk, the way you relate with other people, the way you make decisions, the way you handle issues, demonstrate it. Or you have Christ in you. You have the Holy Spirit in you. Demonstrate this fruit of the Holy Spirit in you. You must not be like an actor. 
You know actors. Tell you about a story. Eh? You see actors acting. Someone is acting like a doctor eh, in the story. But they are not a doctor in real life. They are acting like the president. They are rich in the story. But when you come here in real life, they are what? They are nothing. And that's why sometimes actors, I don't know, I, 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 I'm not an expert. But sometimes that's why you get confused in life. Because you spend so much time acting what you are not. And you come into real life, you are not what you were acting in the movies. What happens to you? Eh? You, you, you are a millionaire. Imagine you are a millionaire in the, in the movie. You are a millionaire and you are driving those big cars and, and having big money. But when you come to real life, you are what? You are struggling. What do you think it does to a person? It confuses you. you, do, you sometimes you end up not knowing who am I? So that's why even here, when we talk of demonstrating, showing, we must not be coming to act. Sunday, we are good, we are holy, we are right. But when we go to Monday, Tuesday, and other days, we are different. Titus is not told to act. He must be himself. He must be the person of God who has the faith, who has the spirit, who obeys God. And he must show it. He must demonstrate it. He must be himself. And that's what we need when we talk of integrity. Because that's what it says in, in, in Titus 2, um, verse 7. Show integrity, dignity. Those things, you don't act them. You don't pretend. What it means is that be real, be honest, be yourself. It doesn't mean that you must be perfect. Yes, we are wrong. When we do wrong, we humble ourselves. When we are corrected, we accept correction. We are true. We are faithful. That's what we are called to be. We are honest in what we say. Zunenda Amba. Dingo. I'm not saying something, but in my heart I know that I'm lying to you. No. Then we are pretending. Then that's what makes us to be confused. But this thing of showing and demonstrating, it's so that, as verse 8 says, even those who don't agree with the gospel, don't accept the gospel. They don't find anything to say against you, to say against us. And it's a reminder, I think this evening, many people are crying about even today. When they complain about the church, the pastors, we are not right. When they complain about the gospel, those who go to church, they are not right. We are the ones who maybe are abusive. We are jealous. We are unfaithful. We are stealing money. And that's why many cases people will say, no, no, I don't want to go to church. Or I don't even want to go to your church. If I was to ask the people who know you, the people who work with you, your neighbors, and I'm coming and I'm saying, I go to church with you. What will those people say about the church? Knowing you. Our Tuangari Mininga Karek. Knowing you. Will they say, yeah, hey, this, this church is good, man. This church is good because our neighbor is a, is a good neighbor. It's a good neighbor. Or if I was to come to your workplace, hey, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm your pastor. I'm coming to visit you. What will your boss say? Hmm? What will your boss say about the church? Looking at you, looking at your behavior, will they be able to say, yeah, I can see your faith. It has made you a right person. Even though the people don't believe in God, even though the people don't believe in Christ, but they are able to respect you. They are able to respect you because of your integrity 
and the way you handle yourself, your hard work, your faithful work, the way you relate with people. But sometimes it happens that people hate the gospel. People hate the church. Also because of us. We make other people to hate God. Not to respect the gospel because of the way we handle ourselves. The way we talk to people. And that's what we have been encouraged here. To do and demonstrate so that even others who don't know God can respect God. And the important thing about demonstrating, look at verse 9. Verse 9 and 10. Because it's easy to demonstrate when things are going well. But when things are difficult, that way we must also demonstrate the faith. Because when it says in, in verse 9, slaves are to be submissive to their own masters in everything. They are to be well-pleasing, not argumentative, verse 10, not pilfering, pilfering during uh, but showing all good faith again that word showing all good faith so that in everything they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior now what is being said there is that you might be a person who is like a slave a servant a slave was like an employee in this time and uh, you have a, a boss who is not good these people are not paying me enough how about They are not paying me enough. So what is my response? What is my response? I'm going to steal money of the company. I'm going to cause disruption. Because these are tight I'm going to cause disruption in this company. Why? Because you are not handling me right. You are not a good boss. This is not a good environment. And therefore, I must go and do wrong. I'm going to destroy. I guess that's what people do. Hmm? Isn't it what we, we sometimes do? We are tempted to do that. You didn't handle me right. I'm going to what? Do you bad. You said bad words to me. I'm going to what? Say bad words to you. You hurt me. I'm going to what? Hurt you or harm you. Because you did bad, wrong thing to me, I'm going to do wrong. And that's the temptation. But then if we do like that, what we are actually demonstrating is that we are like the bad people who are hating us. Where is the good faith? Where is God in you? In that situation, when people do wrong to you, I'm also going to do wrong. Because the environment is bad. I'm being mishandled, mistreated. Therefore, I'm going to show you flames. Bad things. And that's why, as I said, it's repeating that word again. Showing all good faith. That is verse 10. But showing all good faith. Showing good faith. That's what we are called to do. To show the faith. To show the power of God. To show the grace of God. To show the spirit of God. To show Christ in us. That's what we are called to show. But if we are in a situation in the world where, yes, things are wrong. But then we also change and become like them then we are not demonstrating the faith. And when this is shown, is to call us to be like Christ, to be like Jesus Christ, who was also done wrong. Jesus Christ was mistreated. Jesus Christ was cursed. Jesus Christ was disrespected. But what happened? He said good words. He even prayed for them. And that's why even some of them at the cross, they were able to say, yeah, this was the Son of God. This was the Messiah. This was the Christ. Because of the way he responded, showing God. 
And that's why in verse in, in 10, it says, you must adorn this doctrine. This is our uniform. I know churches have uniform. Now I'm one of the person who doesn't favor a uh, uniform. Okay. I'm not saying uniform is wrong, but what must show you a Christian is your action. Your behavior. That's your uniform. Because the problem sometimes of uniform is that I will wear the uniform on Sunday again. And then I'll be holy. I don't touch alcohol. Uh, I don't do wrong things. Because I'm wearing the what? The uniform. But then when I take out the uniform, it's like I've taken out the Christianity. I've taken out the faith. That's the danger of a uniform. It can be good, but there are also disadvantages of uniform. But our uniform, the thing that must characterize you, this person is a Christian. This person is a church member. This person is a person of God. It's not that you are wearing a cross or you are wearing a t-shirt that says uh, Jesus is Lord. It's your behavior. It's your character that is shown in your conduct. That is your uh, uniform. That's why verse 10 is showing off adornment. Now let me quickly come to the last thing. When we say teach the right doctrine, the motivation, because it's difficult, no matter what is the motivation. Verse 11 to 14, he calls to better two words. Why which fan of Funzo is a Eh, Why you teach which fan of Kondele? Why must he do it? It is because number one, verse 11, the grace, Roku Achilizi, the grace of God has been revealed. Chilizi Chamu Zimu Chobo Nara. And what does the grace of God do? It teaches us to renounce ungodliness. So in other words, when we talk of the grace of God, we have power. The Namanda, God has worked in us. We can't uh, do the right thing without the help of God, without the power of God. We are only able to do the right thing because of the grace of God in us. And that's why even when we teach, it's not me who change you. It's not me by my words who change you. No. But it's the grace of God. It's the power of God that works in your heart, in your mind, to change you, to transform you. And because of that grace of God, it is what gives us hope that even when we teach, whether we are teaching the children, whether you are teaching others, why will they change? It's because of the grace of God in them, which God works in them. And that then gives us encouragement to work with God, to be used by God, because he is also working in the people so that they can change, so that they can do what is right. And that's what Titus is being told. You are not alone. You are not doing it on your own, where you must depend maybe on skill. And you know what? I'm, I'm a good talker. I will come with uh, very many uh, strategies to convince people. No. It's not you who convince the people. It's the grace of God which teaches us. It teaches us to renounce ungodliness. And as it says, to love what is right. It's God who trains us. It's God who changes us. But how does God work? He uses people. But also in verse 12, he's talking about God who continues to build us. Because the goal is so that you can be trained to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-right, self-controlled, upright, and godly lives, even in this present age. God wants you to be holy. It's God who works to make you to grow in holiness. In English, we call it sanctification. 
We are a work in project, a work in progress. We are an unfinished project. We are growing, we are growing. And that's what God is doing. He's progressing in your life. And because of what God is doing in people's lives, we are encouraged to teach. We are encouraged to pray. We are encouraged to bring the word of God. But there is God who works in people so that they become holy. Even in this world, verse 12, where there is wrong, there is bad things, there are temptations. We are cornered there now. Is it possible to have godly people? Is it possible to have upright people? Is it possible? We are cornered there now. Because as I once made example, you find sometimes parents saying, uh, raise a child here. Who is someone up? Who are someone up? It's impossible because the township, Houteng, is bad. So let's take this child and take him or her to where? Uh, to to vendor, to rural place. Maybe this person will be what? Will be right. Will be protected from evil influences. But from my knowledge, it doesn't really work because even there in vendor or KZN or wherever. There is evil. There is darkness. There is bad things happening which can influence people, can influence children. But how can we be protected? How can we have hope that as church we must preach the word of God and it will produce people who are upright? It's because of God, his program, God, his commitment that the people he saved, he will grow them. The people he saved, he will protect them. And that's what encourages us to pray, to preach, to teach the right doctrine, knowing that it can produce that. But also, the other motivation, verse 30, Jesus is coming back. Yes, If there is something that must motivate the church to teach the right doctrine, even though it's difficult, even though there is evil, even though uh, people sometimes are difficult to, to, to listen. Jesus is coming back. And when he comes back, it is not only the fact that we are going to be with him. Those who believe in Christ, they are going into glory. Those who believe in Christ, they will have eternal life with God. We are saved from hell. But the other thing about Christ coming back is that he will reward his servants. He will praise you. Who don't call them? You are not ashamed of me. I will not be ashamed to talk your name before my father. Because you served me. This is you being praised even on the last day. This is what you did. This is what I achieved through you. Kevin Vendaita, Gakaimi, as a church. You as a church. This is what I achieved through you. Because Christ is coming back. Many people are, are afraid of judgment. But we should not be afraid of judgment. Actually, we must look forward to the coming of Christ. Because our sins have been judged already on the cross. Our sins have been punished on the cross. Your sins have been punished on the cross. There is no longer condemnation. But then, what is this day which is coming? The appearing of Christ. It is like a day of presentation. The show. Or the show. The red show, the mini carnival, all of us are carnival. The one who works at carnival. There, there are many shows where people come to present what they have been working on, what they were practicing. Maybe uh, in the olden days, you will find that on a independence, the chief independence, independence day, then the independence day. Uh, I think it was 13th September, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. But what will the people do be doing there? They were practicing dancing, dancing, dancing these traditional dances, and they will be showing it. Some will have been doing artifacts, uh, things which they carved. Now they are coming to show. 
And that's what basically the coming of Christ is about. What have you been doing? What have you been doing? What has Christ been doing through you? As a church, also other churches who will be presenting. This is what we're doing. Christ, you gave us the spirit. You gave us the Bible. You gave us time. You gave us money. You gave us knowledge. You gave us whatever. Look at what we produce. We will be presenting. And what a wonderful day it will be. When we are able to come and say, Christ, look at what we taught. You gave us this number of people. These children. Eh? There they are in heaven. These people, here they are in heaven. It's not about the church buildings and uh, cars and how much bank balance. The thing that will get you applause and reward in heaven when Christ comes back is how many people are in heaven because of you. How many are in eternal life because of your teaching, your prayer, your advice, your encouragement, your witnessing? How many? How many? Are you counting? Nicobara? Yes. Nicobara? I'm saying to must count. How many are we counting in eternal life? Because that's what will bring us applause. And that's what, when it talks of, we are waiting for Christ to appear. That is the encouragement. Have a Christo. And because of that, we are encouraged to continue to persevere, never give up, talking, teaching the right doctrine. But the last thing, Bawanaka verse 15. Before 15, but verse 14. It talks of Christ who redeemed you. Christ who redeemed you. Christ who sacrificed himself for you. Christ who loved you. That's the other motivation. If Christ could leave heaven and die for you, it means you are important. It means this work of saving and repenting is important. And that's the encouragement. Christ died for me. Christ died for you to redeem, to redeem and redeem. so that you become his own. You become his servant. It's a privilege to be part of the people of God. It's a privilege, it's an honor for Christ not only to die for you, but now you belong to him. You are his servant so that now you are used to achieve great things. And that's what even verse 15 then says. Don't uh, stop talking. Uh, declare these things. Exhort. Rebuke with all authority. Let no one disregard you. Yes, people will look down on you. People can laugh at you. People can reject and even ask you, who are you? What do you know? What are you telling us? Even today, it's even worse. You are coming with a white man's book. You are coming with a foreign religion. You are coming with something which doesn't work. We are people of today. You are coming with an old book. You are coming with things which are irrelevant. They will disregard you. But what do you mean? But it says, speak these things. Declare these things. Exhort to the Rebuke with all authority. In other words, don't be afraid. Nari, hey, 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 these people won't listen to us. Hey, 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 these people, they will look down on me. So what? That's what Titus is being told to do. Don't regard them. Don't look at their opinion and what they are saying. But declare this as the truth of God. And let God encourage each one of us. Let God encourage us. This task, this purpose of the church, it is what we aspire to be. It is what we pray God to also help us to fulfill, to achieve it. God, your right doctrine, may it be among us, but also through us. 
must go even in this world where it is needed. Amen. <laughs>